Now in this video, we're going to take a look at the element of the game, the goals, and see what that means in terms of soccer and the opportunities for the kids to learn. Now goals provide two things that are necessary for the game. One is a direction and two, an objective. In this, uh, in this situation right here, we have a basic game, one versus one, blue players attacking the goal at the top, the red player is going to defend and counterattack here. What the goals provide is that there is a sense of direction. If you take the goals out, then blue can go anywhere they want to go. There's no value to any particular space on the field. So blue can go over there, here, wherever. This makes it very difficult for the red player to defend because there's nothing to defend. They just basically start chasing blue wherever blue wants to go. Another thing which becomes really important when you're dealing with 3 versus 3, 4 versus 4, 5 versus 5, is that the goals supplying direction also now give you right and left. Even in this 1 versus 1 situation, you can say that the blue player needs to go to the right or needs to go to the left. Now in addition to the direction, the objective that the goals provide is critical to how the games teach. Each player has an objective. They want to score and at the same time prevent their opponent from scoring. If they succeed, that's valuable positive feedback for them. If they fail, that's valuable negative feedback for them. Failure is just as important as success. It's what lets you know what you need to work on. Now we'll look at some of the ways that you can manipulate the goals to get to a soccer problem that you want to create. One way is to change the number of the goals. Even in the basic game where you have one goal across from each other, you can change that by having four goals. Two here and two there. Now two, the blue has to defend the two goals here but can attack the two. So the idea there is if red goes to defend one goal, blue changes direction and attacks the other. It doesn't need to be limited to the four goal game. You can play with six goals if you like. You still maintain the direction and you still maintain objectives. Another way to modify the game is to change the size of the goals. So just in this example here, red has been able to dominate blue. Blue's not getting any opportunities to score, so you make red's goal much larger. Now blue has a better chance to score, and another thing that it does, it forces red to come off the line. Red cannot simply stay back there. The goal's too large. It'll be too easy for blue to score. So now it forces red to come away from their own goal and defend farther out in the field. Another way to manipulate the goals is to change the location. You can look back on the video on uh, the recess goals, which is one way to drop the goals off the line. You can drop them back several yards if you like and put a restriction in that you can only score with the ball on the ground. That changes the game. Another thing is to locate them off center. So now as a player's play, the red player defends in here will force the blue player onto their left foot. And by the same token, when the red player comes down, they should be playing more off of their left side as well. You can also change the type of goals. The, there's a game called line soccer, where now blue needs to dribble and beat the red player, but for them to score, they need to stop the ball on the back line. When red wins the ball, they will then stop the ball on that line back there. The game still has a direction, and the game still maintains its objectives. A game similar to line soccer is to put some targets out there. It could be an end zone, or it could be some hoops of some type. And so now, as a blue player beats the red player, they will need to stop it inside either one of those to score a goal. Red, same thing, stopping it inside blues. Hoops are their target area. And then there are combined goals, where in this case, the blue is defending one single goal in the center of the field, while the red defends two goals on the side. This gives them different problems, different opportunities. The goals do not have to be identical. 
if you want the players to work towards a different objective. Now there are going to be times when you dispense with goals at opposite ends of the field because you have a specific problem that you want to address. However, if you're going to be coaching soccer, you're going to have goals located at the opposite end and the goals will have a clear objective that the players understand and have a reasonable chance of achieving. That's how they're going to learn how to play soccer. Some of those other games we'll talk about later when we talk about uh, training sessions for very specific objectives.